before we begin our next app, we're going to create a uh, we're going to create a database using MySQL. We're going to create some PHP scripts to talk to that database, and then we're going to use our app that we're going to create later to access that data. So for for now, the goal is to get that data to appear as a web service in a browser, and then from there we can build our app next time. So we're going to use a cPanel. cPanel is part of every major uh, web hosting platform, especially the, the cheaper kinds where you get those deals like through Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatnot. Uh, so you usually have a login, which we're going to log in with there. And so typically cPanel has a lot of the standard features you see here. So file manager, disk usage, backup, and it the look and feel varies from hosting provider to hosting provider. So so my Bluehost account looks totally different from what you see here. You you have a you may have especially this you have like PHP my admin to manage your MySQL databases, MySQL database wizard. You might have a lot more when you pay for hosting somewhere else. Right? We can do email accounts, a lot of things here. Metrics, security and so on. We're going to start with creating a MySQL database. So to do a MySQL database, we're going to start off in MySQL databases. And again, the options vary from, from platform to platform. Ours here has MySQL databases. We're going to create a brand new database. So that'll be our first step. This one will be, we'll, we'll call it uh, My Data. All right, we'll hit Create Database. All right, and then we'll go back. Now, with the database, we need to create a user with a username and password to access this database. So I'm going to scroll down, and we're going to add a new user. So this user will be Bob, and his password will be, let me hit Create User. So now that you have a user and you have a database, you hit go back. Now we have to join the user to the database. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says add user to a database. I have my user Bob. I have my database my data. I'll just hit add. It's going to ask me for what privileges. For now, I'm just going to say all just for this implementation here. All right, so I have all. I'm just say make changes. So now I have a user, I have a, I have a database, I have the user joined to the database. Now the next step is to create the, the table in the database to work with uh, our data. So I hit go back. And in fact, I can just jump back to the cPanel. So now, we have all the information we need. We're just going to scroll down. We're going to use PHP my admin to uh, to create a, our table and enter the data into there. Now, depending on the implementation, it may ask you to log in with the user we just created, or it'll just jump right to it. So you'll see here your list of databases. I'm going to expand the first one, which is called my data. You'll see it's empty, so that means we have to add some tables. So I'll click on the, da the database name, and first thing it's going to say is create table. This table, I'm going to call it people. And number of columns is actually going to be five, because the table is going to have ID, name, email, address, and salary. So I'm going to say five columns. And I'll hit go. All right. So first column will be ID. It'll be an int. We want it to be primary key, so primary. And we want to have it auto increment. So a size for the int, it's asking for a size, let's say 11, 11 bit bits. Just some random number. And we'll hit auto increment. So check off that checkbox for AI or auto increment. So that's the first column. 
Second column is name. It would be a varchar. Eh, you can put any number like 50. Next one is address. And we'll do varchar of 50 again. The third one is email. Varchar of 50. And finally, we'll do salary. Which, to keep it simple, we'll just do a, a, a varchar of, of uh, you know, 10. Just to keep it simple. Could be a number, should be a number, but just for simplicity's sake today, we're just going to do this. Now, that's our table. So once we're done, we'll just hit save to do this. It may give you an error, which it's doing right now, right? A 1089 error. So what we're going to do is, is actually complaining about the primary key and auto increment. So I'm actually going to undo the primary key and undo the auto increment and save it. And it's saved. And we can still get that back. So there's a little bit of a, a trick to it. So now that we're here, this is our new table called people. And under the ID column, there's the more option, which says primary and unique. We're going to do both of these right here. So I'll hit that, hit OK. And so it made it a primary key. It's got a little key there. And we want to make it unique. So click on unique so we can do the auto incrementing. All right, so one more thing we're going to do before we enter some data in is go to change for the ID column. And under AI, we'll check it off. We'll hit save. So now auto incrementing will happen. So now we've got our auto, auto increment attribute here. So now we can go in and insert some data. And start with monkey. He'll be at 111. Monkey Road, monkey at projectmkd.com. He'll be $11.23 is his salary. Good enough for bananas. And there we go, it inserted. And you can go ahead and insert a few more rows as you see fit. So I'll do a couple more rows. So donkey, 222, donkey circle, address is Oh, sorry, email is donkey project mkd.com and his salary will be 3344. Yeah, maybe one more. So llama, and that's 333 llama way, and then Llama at 4455. All right, you keep entering data as, as you see fit. Now the trick is once you have your data, you can verify that all your data is there by hitting people. And we see all of our entries here. All right, so at this point we have our data inside the database. All right, so we're going to close this off because we're done with our database. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our PHP scripts. So you can use any IDE. All right, so using VI, I call this connect.php. And I'm going to insert in my PHP statements. And then I'll try my variables here. So DB server equals, and then localhost. DB user is Bob. DB password is equal to Bob likes donuts 
at symbol and db name is equal to my data. Don't forget your semicolons at the end of the line. We're doing a course on Swift, so we can neglect the semicolons, but PHP needs semicolons, so don't forget. And finally, close off your PHP. All right, so now we're going to create another file. This will be called SQL to JSON. Dot PHP. And we'll open up with our PHP tagline. I'm going to put the closing PHP in. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to require connect.php so that it imports the data from that file. So require connect.php. Then we're going to try initiating a connection to the server. So we're going to say db dollar db is equal to my SQLI underscore connect. Well, first argument will be db server db user db pass or die and say could not connect to my SQL as an error message. Alright, so first step, we're going to make a connection to the database server. We're going to initiate a connection based on our credentials, so username, password, server name, and database name. Alright, so assuming this passes, next step is to select the database we want to work with. So we're going to say my SQL I underscore select underscore DB where the first argument is the DB variable we got we have above and the second argument is DB name or die so could not select database or could not yeah that's a good one. All right. Next step is create our query. So we'll say dollar query equals select star from people. That's the name of our table. Don't need the semicolon inside the query. And the next step is to execute the query dollar result equals my SQLI underscore query and then DB comma query alright next step is after we've executed the query is to retrieve the data so we'll just say while row equals my SQLI underscore fetch array of result closing curly there all we're going to do is create a new variable called row set equals row now all we have to do is convert this to JSON and send it back so we'll say echo trim JSON encode row set And finally, close the connection.
So this is enough to make a connection to a database, download the data, and send it back as JSON objects. We're using the trim command to trim out any random extraneous characters that may show up in, in the database retrieval. But other than that, this is all we need for getting a simple, uh, uh, to get our data and retrieve it and maybe display on the browser or essentially display it in our iPhone app. All right, so all that's left to do is just save this file. We're back at our command line, and I'll take the command line back. So now last step is, back in the cPanel, is to upload these files. So now we're going to use File Manager to upload the files. And you want to make sure that your files exist under the folder public underscore HTML. So I'm going to click on public HTML. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I call it uh, My Data. So whatever your URL is, it'll be slash My Data. And I'm going to click on My Data. And it's empty, so I'm going to upload my files. So I'll hit Upload. You can drag and drop, or you can select File. I'll say Select File. And there. Once your files are there, now you can open up a browser and try and open up SQL to JSON.php. All right, so I'm going to say slash my data slash SQL to JSON.php. And there you go, you have your data there. It looks kind of strange, like it looks very cryptic. Don't worry about it. If you see duplicated stuff, don't worry about it. Your iPhone app will filter it out and will we'll give you clean data in the end once you use the JSON serializing object in, in iOS. But there you have it. So what we learned here was to create a database. We learned how to navigate cPanel first to be able to create a MySQL database, to be able to create a MySQL user, join the user to the database, and then create a PHP script to retrieve data from the database using our credentials. Uploading those PHP files, we learn how to use File Manager to upload those PHP files. And then we learn how to go into our browser and try and view the data through the PHP script SQL to JSON.php. So our next step now is to create an iPhone app that will, in fact, retrieve this data and display it in a table or split view.